Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Let's talk about the differences in hypertrophy training between beginners, intermediates, and advanced. So, a couple things we need to cover today. First, we're going to define each term. That's actually a bit of a task in and of itself. People use these terms all the time. A lot of times they don't have very good definitions. Then we're going to talk about how you know which one you are. Okay, and that's another discussion. It's very good. We'll talk about how beginner training is different, how intermediate training and advanced training is different. We'll talk about what kind of results you can expect at every single stage of the process and sort of finish off with some take home points. So defining each term, a lot of people throw these terms around, but what really do they mean? Easy way to categorize them is by time spent training. So a beginner means you've probably been training between zero and two years. Intermediates, probably between three and six years, and anything over seven years is advanced, but that's not the best definition for a couple of reasons. Well, what if you've been training pretty hard for three years and then took a year off? Are you an intermediate still? Are you a beginner again? Who knows? What if you've been training just total fuckery style and just total dog shit training uh, for four years, maybe an intermediate, but then you started training really well and up the consistency and the difficulty and the logical design of the training. What are you? Beginner again? Maybe? Who knows? What if you have really, really crappy genetics and after the first six months, you're just struggling to put on size and you haven't used all these advanced techniques to gain anything? Are you really a beginner still? I don't know. And on the other hand, what if you have amazing genetics and uh, 10 years of training, you've just had easy gains, you, they came to you with no thought. Are you really an intermediate even? Or are you definitely not advanced in any sense of the word? So we definitely need a better sense uh, of what these concepts mean. We need a better set of definitions, and I think we have them here. Here we go, three definitions, one for each. If you're a beginner, that generally means you can make great gains with hardly any thought whatsoever. They just happen by default if you train hard and consistently with almost no intelligence whatsoever. Another easy way to tell if you're a beginner is if you're doing a hypocaloric fat loss diet and you're gaining muscle and strength while on the diet. You're almost certainly a beginner, especially if your gains on the diet are very good. Intermediate. You are an intermediate when you first really have to think about your training to guarantee gains a lot of times it's heralded by the arrival of your first plateau. Okay, beginners don't know what plateaus are, almost by definition. They just keep gaining. Intermediates would be like, yep, at one time my squats started to stall out on me or my quads kind of stopped growing, it seemed, and I had to really rethink the process. They're going to have to be intelligent with fatigue management and progression in order to guarantee consistent gains. But those consistent gains, if they just get the basics right and fix a couple problems, will be guaranteed great consistent gains, no problem. And... For the dieting aspect, someone's intermediate or their muscle is an intermediate muscle when they can gain a little bit on a fat loss diet or at worst maintain all of their size and strength. Lastly, advanced. Easy definition. You're advanced if you don't make gains unless you have all of your ducks in a row. You got to get pretty much everything right, even down to the details. Your diet has to be great. Your training has to be super well organized. Uh, if your diet is too small of a surplus, if you do the wrong exercises, even though they're generally trained the same muscles, you may experience no gains at all. This is no more guarantee of gains, even if you apply yourself and work hard and get the basics done. On a diet, advanced people will maintain their muscularity and sometimes even lose a little bit on a diet, even though they're trying really, really hard. So if you think you're advanced, but you just did a fat loss diet and you're drug-free and you did the diet and you gained muscle and strength during the diet, you're not advanced. You're just not. You may be an intermediate, but you may really be a beginner. All right. So TLDR, the super easy explanation here is this. If your gains are coming super easy with no thought whatsoever, you're a beginner. If the gains only come when you apply yourself pretty diligently and implement a plan, a basic plan, but a plan nonetheless, you're an intermediate. And if the gains only come if you really check all the boxes and you pay attention to the fine points, then you're advanced. It's really that simple. Now, here are some implications. Some of these are counterintuitive. First, you don't want to be advanced. People always talk about, ooh, advanced training. I want that. You don't want to be advanced. Advanced training is kind of like advanced medicine. You don't want to be a candidate for advanced medicine because that means, first of all, you're very sick. And second of all, the basics didn't work to get you better. Okay, you're like, ooh, I'd love to be in the ICU. That doesn't make any sense. 
That's kind of what advanced training is. It's all the real fine-tuned stuff that's like our Hail Mary to get you to grow again. You don't want to be advanced, okay? Here's another piece of interesting good and bad news. Some lifters will be in the advanced category essentially because they're so resistant to gains after a year of training. Automatically, only the advanced stuff works. An attention to detail has to be applied for you to gain any muscle. It happens. Not great genetics. On the other hand, some people with amazing genetics can only be advanced after 10 years. Okay, and they had like six years of being a beginner and four years of an intermediate, and they only have to really start thinking about the deep intellectual insights of training after 10 years. Uh, I'll note that this is really easy to spot who's who on YouTube. If they say, say shit like, don't worry about the details and just fucking train, brother, and you'll grow, they're not advanced, almost certainly, or they're at least speaking to other people that they think they're not advanced, okay? Lastly, and this is a very, very fascinating implication, each muscle can have its own developmental category. Okay, if your biceps, you just train them and they just grow and you do rows and they grow, pull-ups they grow, curls they really grow, then your biceps are beginner muscles. They respond like beginner muscles, even if you've been training them for five years or for six years or longer. On the other hand, if you have to just get everything completely fine-tuned, super right to get your hamstrings to grow and otherwise they just recede and actually get smaller, even after a year of training, your hamstrings could be advanced and that could be in the same body at the same time. So it's actually a little bit less Productive to think about individuals only as the beginner, immediate, advanced, though it is a helpful rubric. It's helpful to think of that, but on top of that layer, some stuff about their individual muscles, right? How difficult is it to really grow the chest versus the lats, so on and so forth, and everyone's different. Almost no one has an even distribution of how easy or difficult it is to gain muscle for the various muscles of their body, for sure. Now, Let's take a look at what each one of these look like. What does beginner training look like first? I'm approaching this from the perspective of the best long-term size gains. This is a beginner that wants to be super jacked and super lean years down the road. If you wanna transform for a Hollywood role in six months, you don't train like this as a beginner, you're gonna be training differently. But most of us who are watching these videos, these long-winded intellectual explanations, we want the best results for ourselves, for our clients, so we're gonna Take some time. Beginner training for the best long-term size gains. Number one, you want people to focus mostly on compound basics. They're very efficient uses of time. They grow slabs of muscle. They have a huge raw stimulus magnitude. They generate some fatigue, but we don't care because beginners just don't generate a lot of fatigue because they're not that strong. And they teach you how to move in excellent patterns that you'll use for all the other assistance exercises you'll ever do after that. So number one, focus mostly on compound barbell basics. Number two, Focus more than anything else in developing excellent technique. Not only will a technique guarantee you good muscle growth, it'll keep you safe. And once you learn technique, it's ingrained and it can be used to build bases on later. If you learn the technique wrong at first, you have to relearn it. It's a really, really shitty process. Great thing for beginners is to learn really, really good technique because they don't have problems growing. And once their technique is there, it's going to fuel excellent growth through their intermediate and advanced phases. How many of you guys have seen advanced lifters in the sense of difficulty growing their muscles doing squats with a technique of someone that just learned them yesterday? And like, good God, if that guy only knew how to squat right, he wouldn't be advanced, so to speak. He would get great quad growth, but that person might have been training his quads for 10 years. If only at the beginning of that person's training career, someone taught them how to squat right, they would have had great growth for years and years and years and never hit plateau super early. This is the time to learn excellent technique. Next. Training for beginners ideally should be about two to four times per week. Why? Because you want folks to have something that they can adhere to for sure. If you say, look, you're a beginner, you got to train seven times a week, most people are just going to burn out of that. You don't want people to burn out. You want them to have an enjoyment of the process and then slowly add adherence if they want more. Okay. Someone tries a food for a certain time, you're not like, here, eat two pounds of this. Because if they don't like it, they might be like overwhelmed. They might just be overwhelmed even if they like it. But if someone tries a food and they're like, wow, I think I want more of that. You can always give them more and then give them more and then give them more without making them sick, right? It's so the first thing you do. If you don't know if you like shrimp, you don't go eat, have all you can eat shrimp. Just the same way. If you don't know if you like lifting, you don't just pile on the lifting. That's a great way to burn people out. A little bit of lifting, two to four sessions a week, each one maybe 30 minutes to an hour at a time learning the compound every basics technique and slowly getting stronger, that's the best way to go. And later, you can always add more. Because muscle groups recover really quickly from training when you're a beginner, you just don't do a whole ton of damage, 
and because the learning component of technique requires lots of reinforcement, which you can do, and also the minimum effective volume per session is very low, folks will grow from one or two sets per muscle group, you basically train each muscle group at every session. So every session is whole body training or whatever part of their bodies they wanna develop every session of the week is hit. So if you train three times a week, it's whole body Monday, whole body Wednesday, whole body Friday, that sort of thing. Next up, you wanna use mostly the five to 10 rep range, why? The biggest reason is this, five to 10 reps is enough reps to get really good technical practice, but not so many reps per set that you start to fatigue and the technique goes out the window because you're too tired. That's really the fundamental reason. The good news is that range is also relatively heavy, right? And that builds a really good strength base. When you learn technique under heavy loads, it extends to when you're tired and when you're this and when you're that. So sets of five to 10 are great because of those factors, not for any other magical reasons. What about how hard to train? Relatively speaking, you want beginners to cycle from roughly five reps in reserve per set to two reps in reserve, okay? Why not go one rep in reserve and zero reps in reserve? Because their technique isn't set in stone yet. It's gonna start to break down if you take them too close to failure, and we don't want that. Okay, that's definitely a bad sign, bad deal. So we want beginners to push themselves until they're, whoop, it's getting kind of tough, and then we wanna back off a little bit. And during that time, as you're cycling from 5 RER to 2 RER back down, you want to add load as the primary method of progress. They get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. Everything good comes from that. As far as volume, you want to deload beginners when they get to roughly two-thirds of the way to MRV. How do you know that? It's when their technique starts to look a little shaky and their fatigue becomes very notable. They come in and like, oh my God, I'm beat up from last week. They're still elevating their performance. They haven't hit MRV. It's time to back off, give them a little bit of an easier sort of a mini deload week, halfway deload, and then they can come back super refreshed and go again. There will be times and places for beginners to push uh, harder. And that's when their intermediates pushing to MRV and so on and so forth. Now is not the time. Okay, even if they want to train super hard, make sure that they understand that hard means consistent with excellent technique as they get into more challenging weights. And then as they're really good at that, they're becoming more muscular, stronger. They love everything about lifting. And look, it's super easy. That's the best of all worlds. Don't worry. Eventually, it'll get tough and they'll get the kind of advanced problems that everyone else has. Here's the deal. When do you switch someone to essentially intermediate training as a beginner? Well, it should occur when essentially two things happen. One, the technique on the compounds is excellent, ingrained, which means they know how to do it themselves without you cueing them, and stable, which means rep to rep, set to set, week to week, it looks the same. That's when you know someone knows the technique. And two, their strength progress in the five to 10 rep range has reached notable asymptotic behavior. That means they used to gain strength really fast, and they're still gaining it, but it's like getting to be way slower. Okay, if you're still gaining strength like this, you're a beginner, just keep doing what you're doing, right? If you're still adding five pounds a month, every month on your main lip rep strength, don't change a thing, okay? Five pounds a month, if my math is correct, is like 60 pounds a year on your lifts. Holy crap, it, just keep doing that. Whatever you're doing is working, right? But all of a sudden, if you're uh, starting to get better, you're still getting better, but it's harder and harder, then you've probably entered the intermediate realm, right? To that end, an entry-level intermediate, someone who's just crossed the threshold from beginner and intermediate, is really well prepared to take the make the best out of the intermediate phase by having excellent technique, being way stronger and bigger than when they started, and they love to train and can't wait to train more. That's really awesome. And in order to support, especially at last point, you wanna make sure beginners enjoy their lives. Lots of tasty food, lots of good basics and nutrition, no crazy overreaching phases, no deprivation, no crazy diets, no psycho warrior training. You want someone to finish out their first one to three years of training and be like, I got these great gains, I love training, I wanna do more of everything, I want more challenge. You don't wanna have someone finish two years of training and be like, man, I'm done training, it's way too hard, crazy dieting, F that. Remember, these are long-term processing goals that we wanna set in motion, we don't wanna burn somebody out in the first day or the first year, or so on and so forth. All right, they've gotten to intermediate, how does training change? Okay, for, again, for the best long-term results, Intermediates should continue to focus most of their volume on the compound basics, overhead presses, rows, squats, et cetera. Really, really good stuff. They're gonna start to explore some more isolations, explore some more machines, and compound variations 
uh, every block can change. They go close grip bench and wide grip bench and incline bench and so on and so forth, not just very, very basic stuff anymore. Some of their volume, maybe 20 to 40%, is going to shift into the 10 to 20 rep range, particularly for these isolations and machine movements that they've started employing. So a little bit of diversity there. They're going to begin to push the end of each mezzo, or pretty much each one, to zero reps in reserve, or one if it's something like squats where you die if it gets to zero, and, and or failure. And you want them to start actively working on pushing themselves hard. So it's not just that you're saying, okay, now we're going to failure uh, at the end of every single training mesocycle. You want... As they get into the last several weeks, you want to be like, look, I know you think you can't do any more reps with good technique, but I think you can. And you get under their skin and you push them. And if you're the intermediate, push yourself. Because research on beginners is very clear. What they think is three reps in reserve is really like six reps in reserve. So uh, this is the time to learn to push yourself. Why? Your technique is already really good. So you're not worried about technical breakdown. Now you can really push yourself and more gains will come from that. In addition, on the volume side, now these folks will reach their true MRVs, their maximum recoverable volumes at the very end of training. And that means they're going to detect a performance reduction. What is that? Here's an example. Be beginners, <clears throat> you know, they squat a certain amount of weight and reps, squat a certain amount of weight and reps, go up, 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 up. And when they start to look like they're plateauing, before they do, you deload them, cut them off, switch some things, and then they keep going up. Intermediates, you're going to wait for them to get to a plateau and dip a little. That's how you detect MRV. I did 315 for 10 sets of roughly 10 reps last week. This week, 320 pounds. I got like sixes and fours, and I'm just done. MRV, deload, recycle, and all that good stuff. These folks will be pushing themselves to the limits of volume. Unlike beginners, we don't want that for, but these guys have stable technique. They can handle it, and there's a benefit there. And of course, to those who are willing, you want to go up to like four or six sessions a week. Um, most muscles train two to four times a week. The thing about intermediates, and especially when we get to advanced, is some people say, we actually had a question or a P once, how come you don't have any advanced three-day week program? Because you're, when you're advanced, three days a week doesn't cut it. Just the same way, when you're an intermediate, you've been training two to four times a week as a beginner, it's probably time to go at least four times a week to really, really get good gains. If you're an intermediate, can you train two or three times a week and get good gains? Maybe decent ones. But if you're getting great gains two to three times a week, you're almost by definition a beginner. So time to do a little bit more. Now, for intermediates, switching to advanced training should occur when two things happen. One, the lifter knows how to train hard while maintaining excellent technique through the end of each set and has reached MRV on numerous occasions at the end of accumulation phases and knows what that's like. And... For them, at this point, at the end of the intermediate phase, less than ideal training produces a plateau in rep strength, right? And when they're doing fat loss phases, basically their strength no longer increases at all. If someone does a fat loss phase and their strength goes up, they may think of themselves as advanced. Luckily for them, remember, advanced not a good thing. They're wrong. They're still intermediate. They still don't have to worry about all the super advanced stuff, right? When you're ready to cross the threshold into advanced, you can best prepare yourself as an intermediate by having excellent technique, unquestionable technique, being way bigger than when you were a beginner, great gains, big difference, and essentially being addicted to the training process and to the idea of making progress. And that progress is starting to be tough to make. When you're in that sort of mindset and physical preparedness, you're ready essentially for advanced training. And what the hell does that mean? Well, here we go. What is advanced? Number one, this is when you can begin to focus a lot on the mind-muscle connection, perceiving a ton of tension or the burn in the target muscle. Up until this point, as a beginner, all you wanted to do was get the technique correct. As an uh, intermediate, all you wanted to do was squeeze out more reps and train hard. But my muscle connection is only something you can use when you're training hard because a high level of tension doesn't occur unless you're training hard and a burn doesn't occur in the target muscle unless you're training hard and with good technique. So finally, you could start to focus on the mind-muscle connection and 
you can start to focus on exercises versus just the compounds or whatever that yield the highest stimulus to fatigue ratios. And you can also explore a bunch of different exercises all the time and try to pick the ones which have the best SFRs and also alter them, how you perform them, where you touch the chest to the bar, how you grip to get the best SFRs that you can possibly get. Most training for advanced for most people will occur in the 10 to 20 rep range, probably about half of your working sets per week in the 10 to 20 rep range. Some of the training will be in the five to 10. Some of the training will now be in the 20 to 30 rep range as well. Number four, you wanna really perfect pushing to the limits while maintaining a strong biomuscle connection. So here's the difference. A beginner won't be pushing to the limits. No worries, just get good technique. An intermediate will push to the limits while their, for example, ladder rises, while their technique is externally perceived as great. And they get to failure, and that's it, okay, awesome. Advanced will never have any problems with technique. They will push to true failure and have no problems with technique. And at the same time, they're going to feel their side delts and angle their body specifically to hit their side delts the entire time. So when they fail on the exercise to get close, it's their side delts that are failing. That's one hell of a task psychologically to be able to do. It requires you to be two things. One, the technique is ingrained and you can do it in your sleep. And two, you've been training hard for so long that it's no longer a question. It's not a skill you're working on. Now you can focus on the mind-muscle connection, actually perfecting, pushing the limits while still focusing on the mind-muscle connection. It's really tough. Super counterintuitive. Remember, try this on leg press. You're like, okay, it's quads. I'm feeling my quads. Usually, if you're intermediate, you can either focus a lot on your quads or focus on the psychological drive to push for more reps. If you're truly advanced, you have to learn to do both. It's tough. That's what takes up your time now. Number five, in most mesos, you train to MRV before you deload. You see a performance cap at every single, at the end of almost every single accumulation phase. And potentially there may be some credence to starting a mesocycle instead of at three RR, you might start your mesos at two RR and you may actually end the final week beyond failure, four reps, drop sets, things like that, that might put a little tiny exclamation mark on your hypertrophy that you only need when you're advanced and you can only maintain stable technique and mind-muscle connection with when you're advanced. So just when you're able to benefit from it, you use it, but you have to have a huge, huge understanding of stimulus to fatigue ratio to make sure you don't burn yourself out or get hurt doing these kind of advanced techniques. Number six, lots of prioritization phases or doing double daily sessions. You can no longer do justice to your whole body doing four or five days a week of training. Either you're training eight, 10 or 12 sessions a week, which means lots of double days, and or you're only training some muscles hard parts of uh, you know the year and uh, having the others on the back burner and vice versa. Okay, there's one, you can't just like say, okay, yeah, I'm advanced. I'm working on growing everything on a five day split. What the hell does that even look like? If you do biceps after back, how can you possibly be doing justice to your biceps when your back zaps everything that you have, including your biceps? So definitely, definitely a concern there. Number seven, you're probably to the point where you'll benefit from meso to meso potentiation. Heavier loading on average in meso one, a little bit more high volume loading in meso two, tons of really, uh, sorry, high rep loading in meso two, and then super high rep drop sets and stuff in meso three. You can potentiate frequency, low frequency in the first meso, moderate frequency in the second, and unsustainably high frequency for just one meso in the third. And then you do active rest phase and resensitization right after. Okay, if, if you've never taken a deload, if you don't know what time off is, you're not advanced because an advanced person would have snapped in half had they never done that, right? So now it's time not just for deloads, but for low volume resensitization phase on occasion and active rest phases as needed. Progress in load and reps can occur. Sometimes you gotta get creative. You won't be able to progress necessarily every week. So you might have to progress by only very small margins every week, like literally put two and a half total pounds on the bar every week. Or you might have to add a rep every other week or five pounds every other week to hit your RIR progression, okay? And this is a huge point, point number 10. These are not in an order of importance, by the way. They're just things we have to get through. You have to have your nutrition recovery nailed to a T to essentially guarantee yourself gains and phasic concordance has to be a thing. What is phasic concordance? It means your nutrition and training line up, which means that if you're trying to grow muscle but you're not eating in a surplus, as an advanced person, there's no guarantee you're just gonna gain anything at all. 
As a beginner, hell yeah, you grow tons of muscle on a, on a maintenance diet. As an intermediate, yeah, you grow some for sure. As an advanced, if you're not in a surplus, if someone says, hey, listen, I'm advanced and I would need to get bigger biceps. I say, how much do you weigh? They're 200 pounds. Like, okay, see you in five months at 210 pounds. They're like, well, do I really have to gain weight? Yes, yes, you really have to gain weight to guarantee yourself bicep growth, remotely guarantee. And if you stay 200 pounds and you try to grow your biceps as an advanced, actual advanced, your biceps are advanced, there's no guarantee and I'm not putting my money on the fact that you're gonna gain any muscle. You need all your weapons at the front and the hypercaloric diet is the biggest weapon you have. So all this being said, what kind of results can you expect at each phase? And this is kind of another way of measuring each phase based on results, okay? If you're gaining in big compound lifts, rep strength in the five to 10 rep range of roughly five to 10 pounds per month, you're a beginner and you can use all the beginner strategies we talked about. That might not sound like a lot. People say like, five pounds per month, that's nothing. 10 pounds per month, I guess is decent, but I'm gaining 20 pounds a month. No, you're not, okay? If you consistently, even remotely consistently in a sort of curvilinear fall off pattern over the year, gain five to 10 pounds per month, that's 60 to 120 pounds per year. Can you imagine putting 120 pounds on your bench in a year? I can, I've done it before, only when I was a beginner, okay? If you put 120 pounds on your bench in a year, you're a beginner, it doesn't matter what you tell anybody else. There's no shame in that. If you're an intermediate, you gain typically two to five pounds per month on your big compound lifts in the five to 20 rep range now. So that means you put 25 to 60 pounds on your squat for reps, let's say in a year. That's really good. That's really good. That's not struggling. Now, here's the thing. If you're advanced, you actually can no longer expect gains. So good results is gaining one to two pounds per month in the five to 30 rep range in strength as an advance, which means over a year, you may gain somewhere between 10 and 25 pounds of strength. Now look, if you're advanced and you're squatting 450 pounds at the beginning of year one of advanced, and you're squatting 475 at the end of that year, geez, that's really good. Even if you went from 450 and now you're at 460, look, that's progress, it's money in the bank. If you're increasing your compound lift strength, four reps, all of these rep ranges from five to 30, even between 10 and 25 pounds, you're doing really well for yourself as an advanced lifter and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Now, to that point, here are some take home points, especially the first. Being realistic is huge, okay? If you're advanced and you're still wondering how you're gonna reignite intermediate gains, forget about it. I'm in Philadelphia recording this video. Like, Yo, forget about it, <laughs> fuck off. But seriously, it's just not gonna happen, right? Short of like revolutionizing your nutrition or taking all the drugs in the world, don't do that, you'll die. It's just not gonna happen, right? Uh, and people say this kind of stuff all the time. They say, oh man, I did this one program in high school and my pecs grew like crazy. You're not in high school anymore, motherfucker. That shit's not gonna work anymore, man. You, you can try your high school program again and after three weeks, you're like, this is the stupidest program I've ever done. I like somehow under and over trained at the same time. No shit. The reason it worked back then because you were a beginner. Now that you're advanced or intermediate, it's not gonna work. It's highly unlikely. You're gonna have to be smarter. At the end of the day, you can only do your best. You don't choose which level of advancement you're in. That choice is made for you by the preparedness of your muscles and their readiness to grow. So you already know how to train. And if you need help, we got all the RP videos and books and all this other stuff, 3DMJ, all these other great companies putting out great content. Learn how to do your best job, train your best. When plateaus happen, examine your nutrition and recovery increase the attention of detail you're paying and do your best and you will see the gains you've got coming to you. But if you think you're gonna be a beginner again, that's not gonna work. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.